This is uh, Anitab Simhan. He is uh, a senior editor at the Indian Express. Uh, he covers uh, um, climate uh, change and environmental issues through his uh, um, uh, columns. And uh, many of the changes that have been at the uh, Indian Express over the last two years, especially in the science section, uh, he has been a major uh, uh, contributing factor in that. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's good to see so many people interested in science communication. Uh, it's a very small community of people uh, writing on science, uh, especially in what is now called the mainstream media, uh, as opposed to newer forms of media. Uh, but uh, it's not that uh, you know there is no demand. There is there's, uh, a lot of uh, demand for uh, people who who are able to understand science, uh, able to then communicate it effectively so that others are able to understand uh, it in a much better way. So it's good that you are interested in it. Uh, it can be a, a possible very good career option for you and there are like various mediums that you can take to uh, you know uh, become part of this profession. So I will uh, concentrate mainly on what I do, uh, you know, writing for uh, a newspaper. Uh, depending on the medium, and like every communicator will tell you uh, that in communication theory, uh, they always emphasize to the, the, the nature of the medium that you employ to communicate and knowing your audience. Uh, both of these things alter the way you communicate, the way, uh, you know, it, it changes the way you deliver the message. So newspaper would be slightly different than uh, say a website or a magazine or, or a popular science video that you do. All of them coming under the broad spectrum of uh, science communication. Uh, the basics probably would be, would be very much the same, but the emphasis here and there would be different and that's what uh, you, you would learn to uh, do when, when you actually start doing uh, your, uh, you know, writing on science for different mediums and for different audiences. Science journalism, uh, when, when uh, so how, how is it different from other forms of uh, reporting that we do in a newspaper? Uh, basically, why we have a, a more emphasis on, uh, I mean, a separate sort of an emphasis on science journalism is that it's it is slightly unfamiliar to a large number of people and in that it it is similar to a lot of other things uh, uh, say financial journalism for example uh, I would say you know it's it's it would probably be a, a broad statement to make but then except for say politics or cricket in India, most of the things would be unfamiliar to a very large number of people. In politics and cricket probably you can assume that everyone understands, everyone knows, even the jargons that, that are used in, the, in those two forms. So uh, for all other things, like uh, including sport, a lot of sports journalism, including financial journalism, uh, including say environmental journalism, uh, you... Uh, the, the, because of the unfamiliarity, you have to stress on certain things. There are no special skills. The skills are the same. For a reporter, while, while communicating ideas, you have to have more or less the same kind of skills. But the emphasis is different. And that's, I, I'm going to emphasize on two or three things that, that I consider very important for uh, people who are writing about science, who are talking about uh, science. These skills are actually uh, quite very obvious skills. They're not, not very special skills. They're very, very, very obvious, but then they need to be emphasized more and more when you, when you, are, when you are dealing with things that are unfamiliar. Uh, and these would hold true for, say, financial journalism as well, and writing about golf as well. I mean, not many people are familiar with it as compared to the uh, number of people who are familiar with cricket, for example. So just two or three things. One, of course, very obvious thing you need to simplify and there is always this you know this balance has to be maintained between simplification and oversimplification the balance between uh, 
you know, simplification and accuracy. So you simplify, yes, but at the same time, uh, you know, you have to ensure that you don't go wrong. You don't, you don't, uh, you don't compromise on accuracy. So that's that's very very important, and it's it's very obvious. I don't think I, I need to explain it as well. Uh, the other thing is uh, about uh, drawing analogies. I know that's something that you being in the science field probably do very often while explaining things to your uh, parents who are probably non-specialists or your friend circles who are who are not in the same field you you do try to explain these things and it's it's the same logic the same uh, argument works while while you are communicating in a formal way through newspaper articles or or through uh, websites or whatever the medium that you have chosen so Analogies. I, I mean, all of you might be like familiar with the very, very popular analogy that is given in whenever someone talks about the gravitational waves. That you know, the sheet of cloth and a ball moving on it, and how how it generates, how gravity works, and that kind of. And that example uh, is is very, very vivid. So everyone, you know, completely uninitiated people in this in science are able to understand, are able to visualize what how gravity probably be working even if they don't understand the entire concept, but, but they get initiated into the understandable part of uh, gravity that way. Similarly for, say, uh, when you, when you uh, uh, all of you have read this, how atomic structure, the, the pre-quantum mechanical model of atomic structure, uh, how it used to be compared with the planetary motions. And again, a picture emerges and therefore people are able to identify uh, Okay, this is this is the likely sort of a movement uh, that you know uh, subatomic particles take inside an atom. Now, most of the times, such analogies or such very effective analogies would not be available. So uh, it's difficult to say that you'll find good analogies in each case. You would not. But the idea is to draw it as I mean, the idea is to think about real-time uh, uh, you know experiences that people have and if you can connect it somehow to uh, your research then obviously uh, it it does help in explaining the things but you have to live with the fact that it won't happen every time in fact it won't happen most of the times uh, so if it's possible do it make an effort to look for analogies the third thing uh, and this is again true for uh, journalism across the board is trying to place things in the context you know most of most of the times and uh, this is true for all forms of journalism the context is missing we just go and report an event you know this and this happened so and so said so and so thing and we don't place it in the context it is a uh, it, it, it becomes bad reporting even in other forms of, uh, uh, like in general uh, reporting sense as well. In science, it completely takes away, you know, uh, the life from from your article. If it's not placed in the context, uh, like a particular research is being done, so why is it being done? Why is it being done? What is the gap that it seeks to fulfill? What is uh, the if if a particular outcome is coming out of it, what is uh, the up? I mean, uh, I'm not sure about the application, but at least what is the so sort of gap that that's going to be fulfilled? What is the knowledge gap that already exists? Uh, how has uh, how has the evolution in, of knowledge in that particular uh, field been, and how is how will this particular research going to explain the knowledge gap? Now. When you when you put that in con context, you know you're also giving going to, you're also giving a sort of history of how things have evolved and how things have reached at that particular place and how this is going to take it forward. I think it's it's extremely important to fit this also. So I started with simplification, and there you need to have a good knowledge of uh, good hold over. The language that you use in communicating. So, if you're doing it in English, obviously uh, you have to have some, no I mean, good command over the language, whatever language that you're using. It's a skill that you have. It's it's a tool that you use 
So uh, you, ne you need to know uh, uh, your tool very well. So uh, simplification, context, analogies, three things, they are actually uh, work very well in other forms of journalism as well. They are specially required and I'm, uh, and I'm repeating it, it's just that common skills but you have to have, you have to, we need to place much more emphasis uh, of these kind of skills while we are talking of any unfamiliar subject, not just science. Then I come to uh, the kind of constraints that we work in uh, and the constraints of a newspaper. In newspaper, uh, the main constraint would be space. You know, how much space do you have? Uh, for most of the times, uh, if it's not really a big event, an earth-shattering event, you would have to make do with 350 and f or 500 words at maximum. Now that's a space you would uh, assume is very short to explain, uh, you know, uh, explain in detail. And as I said, if you have to put in context, if you, if you have to simplify, bring in analogies, now all that adds space, all that takes in words. And so how do you, how do, you do that? So that's, that's uh, in, in other mediums probably there are other restrictions. Uh, in some mediums you don't have a restriction of space like on the web. Uh, but while doing video again you have to, you know, there's another constraint of like how, how long you can make the video because again you don't want to make it very boring. So within that constraint of time, within that constraint of space, uh, you have to look at delivering the best message. And that's why when, when you have like, when you have to say four or five things, five things, uh, and you have to pack in 500 words, if, if the choice has to be made between uh, the number of things that you have to say, if you can say, uh, and whether you are able to explain it or not, I will always tell you, go for smaller number thing. Just explain two things in a proper way, put the context about it, and we finished with 500 words if that is the space that you have instead of packing in five ideas and not being able to explain any one of them so that is the way i do it uh, i would rather leave aside two or three things not even touch those kind of things probably take it up in another article but the idea is when what you write those 500 words should be fully understood should be uh, you know uh, properly grasped by whoever is reading it, rather than packing all the ideas and telling I, I know all these five things, right? Uh, I think that's it. I'll, I'll take your questions uh, later in the day. Thank you.